Uh, my name is Lemuang Jeremiah Musese, a uh, filmmaker from Lesotho. Uh, I have the film here in a forum, Mother, I'm Suffocating. This is my last film about you. And uh, I'm very grateful to be in Belenale and to be able to show my film in, in a forum. And um, so far, it's been very well reception and I'm very grateful for it. You want to know something, Mother? You deserve your war, mother. You deserve your war. I saw you. I saw what the white man sees. You deserve your war. Hi, welcome to the 33rd Taddy Award. My name is Jombor Bobak, and we're gonna discuss the movie Mother, I Am Suffocating. This is my last film about you by Jeremiah Lemohan Musesa. Hi, you. welcome you. to the Taddy Award. Thank you for having uh, me. We are very happy to have you here. Um, the film is basically a beautiful farewell, maybe you can say that. Um, to a mother who can be a lot of things, mm -hmm. maybe it can be a home, maybe mm -hmm. it can be um, something in the past that, that helped raising you and helped shaping mm -hmm. um, the narrator into the person who, who this person is now. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the inspiration behind that and, and um, how did this whole project came about to you? Yeah. I think for me, the, 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 the first inspiration or first ideas that I had, they, they, they came out of frustrations, like okay. a lot of frustrations, mm -hmm. a lot of anger, a lot of rage. Like I always say, I, th I feel like it's sort of, it's a laugh that is sort of expressed backwards, mm -hmm. you know, and not belonging to be, to living in Germany and not necessarily belonging and belonging my country but not necessarily in the part and to live in this margins and somehow of course it's very good in the sense of that you can see your country or your own country your circumstances from the outside as an outsider and look at it sort of from the real shot and um, you know and, and that's when you sort of can point a finger at it you know in a way of seeing it as a whole Mm -hmm. and seeing everything, yeah. how everything is functioning. And um, so I think that I could have been anywhere. I could have been um, in, in Mozambique. I could have been in Kenya. Yeah. Uh, I could be in Paris, you know. It's, it comes with seeing your country as an outsider. Mm. And, um, and that's where it came about uh, for me, that I was actually as an observer and seeing it from the distance. Yeah. And, um, and also, so this frustration that I had they sort of morph into sort of a lament. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. a cry for desperation. You're just crying out loud and they need to just voice what you feel. The need to sort of symbolize mm -hmm. what you actually feel because yeah. it's very hard to, when you critique um, a black nation or yeah. a country or a state or, or maybe like, you know, Africa as, as a continent mm -hmm. because of the you know, try to avoid the colonial narrative. Yeah. You know, try to now revision. Uh, I mean, the part of the system, I mean, the part of the movement that is sort of now retelling our own stories. Uh -huh. and, um, and, 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 and it was very hard as well to critique it from this, because I'm divided. Yeah. You know, I want to protect it yeah. at the same time. But at the same time, I'm exhausted. I'm literally suffocating for always standing up for, for the mother, yeah. you know, for the motherland, and not be able to point a finger Mm. You know, so at this, uh, for this film, I sort of allowed myself to be a child again, just like a child and just cry mm. out and just leash out whatever I feel. Yeah. So this is how pretty much it came about, yeah. the idea. Yeah. The film is also, it employs memory work yeah. really intensely. Um, 
how because in, in this way it is a uh, through personal lens but it kind of draws out a history of a country and of a nation um, what was your approach to that to my tell approach this? for me was very personal actually was my mother uh, mm. my mother is the most beautiful human being ever but I know that the religion sort of play a role in her changing yeah. and I feel like she sort of represent so many other countries that I've traveled in right. and also my country in particular that I could see the transformation when religion start you know when they start to embrace it even more that she used to be you know this fashionable person when she was in England she was into concert of Michael Jackson mm -hmm. there's so many tapes of Michael Jackson in the house and novels and all this stuff and gradually they start to change and not just change it, but they start being replaced by holy text, you know. And, and this, for me, as a, as a child of my mother, I just felt like I could connect anymore. Like, uh, they, 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 we don't have anything that's in common anymore. Like, yeah. um, you know, because of, of course I understand the other side of it, that how it, it, the role that it plays for her to believe in something, you know, to survive something or yeah. to carry on something. And, and to be able to raise us and with the society that imposing pressure on her, like the being, you know, not being Jesus, but being crucified. And I understand yeah. her struggle as well. And that one, at one point, one needs to hope for something. One needs something to reach for. But at the same time, at the end, as far as uh, it becomes sort of, a, it brings also dysfunctionality of not relating to a person anymore. Yeah. You know, you are relating to a guru. Your conversation becomes, turns more into yeah. into guru sort of a relationship and, uh, and seeing the, the, how the religion as a whole played the role um, it was very in, 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 important to me because I've seen other people become very better people becoming better neighbor but also I've seen the other end mm -hmm. where it's just uncute things even to mention yeah. you know that are named that are done in the name of, of, of religion so looking at it from a mother perspective I wanted to be more individual yeah. because I'm dealing with the individual sort of a frustration or, or, or the anger that was seething beneath me, so individual. And I didn't want to be collective because otherwise it's collective. Otherwise if it's a collective, I sort of have to be careful, be aware of, uh -huh. yeah. like I'm a, I'm a prisoner of political correctness yeah. in a way yeah. I'm a, because I'm a part of it, you know, yeah. but at the same time I cannot be direct. I'm, and, and voice out what I feel, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's certainly a very interesting position that you took yeah. uh, in, in this film. And um, in the beginning of the film it says, barefoot cinema. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought that this is such an interesting way to, to put this. What did you mean by that? What does this represent to you? <clears throat> the barefooted cinema is sort of a movement that I've started with a couple of filmmakers. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, we are very few, um, and then it's the movement that I thought is necessary because normally it takes a long time to develop a script. Like I'm developing a film here that took like I think it took two years, and I'm about to shoot it next, in March. And I feel like there is uh, topics that there's so much urge, there's so much agency to make them, because it, of course when you go to the traditional form of developing a film. The script changes all the time, which is a beautiful thing, and it's a part of it, and I'm grateful to be part of it. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like there is another essay from cinema that I'd like to introduce, uh -huh. and a cinema that should be shot within a certain period of time and be shot within certain limits of budget. Yeah. That people also is very important for my country because we were influenced by American cinema, and uh, I've got opportunity to, to see other cinemas around the world. Yeah. And I wanted, this is what I wanted, I felt like it, I could bring it to my country in the sense of that we can see a totally different mm -hmm. form of cinema, like a different structure and a different, like there's no structure, there's no form, you know, it's a cinema that is based on impulse. Mm -hmm. That's why it's a bad, it's like a barefooted, it's bad, it's, it's nakedness yeah. of, of it. So this is sort of movement that we have, we have rules that I simply that maybe uh, these rules should not be, you know, which should adhere to these rules. And uh, so this film was the first one. This one was the class, the first class. So it was the first one of seeing how far we can take it. Like, uh, and it's sort of a collective of people. We sort of 
we have the other person to do his film and we do the other person for mm -hmm. other filmmaker the next time. Yeah. So it's, we are at the embryo stage right now. We are trying to test the waters yeah. with this movement. Yeah. yeah. In the film, there are certain figures um, that we um, vaguely follow mm -hmm. on, on the journey. Um, there is this woman with, with the cross, uh, there is a lamb, mm -hmm. there is this um, queer figure with, with the fairy wings. Mm -hmm. um, who are these figures and, and how, why did you choose to follow them in particular? Mm. Because they, they could represent my world. They, mm -hmm. they represent my world so perfectly. <clears throat> I mean, everyone has a sort of his own storyline and that could actually articulate how, how I was feeling or how I'm still feeling. Yeah. And also, it was sort of important as well to make it symbolic mm -hmm. and to make it, because I believe in art, it's sort of a form that, is, that can take its own life. Yeah. Beyond what you, what you intended, mm -hmm. but it takes its own different yeah. form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why even I have so much monologues behind these characters, but I took those monologues out because I, it just, I didn't even shoot it. It was just in, in my text. Uh -huh. um, because some of the text was coming from my own personal diaries. So okay. I just, I know which character represent. But I didn't want to make it on the face to be concrete about what is this particular character represents. Yeah. Because I thought it, it somehow it always robbed the people from the pleasure of discovering and being in a journey and, and somehow finding the meaning that relates to them in a way. So I just let them remain a little bit concrete mm -hmm. as far yeah. as the meanings behind them. And uh, <clears throat> in, in one of the mother, of course, it's, it's, uh, it's, there's so many things that to, to, to mother. The mother could be a migrant, could be me living in Germany, living in a world where I'm struggling between two worlds. And also it could be a, a woman selling in the marketplace. Yeah. Or it could be um, the, the, the person who is like a re refugee, for instance. Or it could be a person who's, 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 who's against the grail with a society. Or whether it's something that is imposed on him or her or they. That whatever you go through against the grail and you feel alone and you're bearing the burden that you cannot even share. Mm -hmm. This is what the woman for me represents. Or it represents even the country itself. Yeah. Or it represents the land itself. Yeah. And also with a character like Fairy, like sort of a this symbolic angelical character, mm -hmm. <coughs> was that uh, for me was purely motivated by uh, her, na uh, her name is Paolo. And um, she's one of the most amazing person in my country because she's the only person who came out, out and banged him herself. Yeah. It's just so beautiful to see it. I mean, I, the, the Lesotho is very, it's very masculine. There's a vein of masculinity is very yeah. strong. And for her to do this and to do whatever she wants to do and dress the way she does it, I wanted to celebrate her in my yeah. film. And my film didn't take, normally it actually took place, in, it, it took place in the camera and also it took place in the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because a lot of people were not even aware that we were shooting a film. Yeah. But, but that's how I was thinking about this film, as a theatrical piece. Mm, okay. Yeah. And, um, and the response that we got, that I didn't want to put in the film, because that's not a, well, wasn't a, my point. Yeah. But my point was to exhibit, not necessarily even objectifying her, but just to more like, to have, to dis interrupt the everyday yeah. gaze. Yeah. And especially at that particular street where we were filming. Yeah, you know, and the response and people were taking photos with, with, with her because some people were like, and I wanted I wanted to this to be a common uh, something that is common that it's not necessarily it, it, it's it's too far world for them because it's there it's ingrained in our culture we know but it, nobody talks about it but of course there are cases where it could be even led to violence where people are attacked because of yeah. their sexual orientation and and for me in this case I wanted to show she's so full of aura, she's so full yeah, of beauty. Absolutely. And I wanted to have this Mona Lisa yeah. on the streets, yeah. you know? And, uh, and of course, the, the character of the butcher, it's, it's, I guess in every society, there's always, um, there's always, a, there's always a, this thing of where we sort of cannibalize ourselves mm. in a way that we are, we are part of the system that sort of enabled, let's say, a white man. 
Yeah. We are part of that system. Yeah. You know what I mean? And for me, I don't blame necessarily the white man. That's why there's a reference of a white man in my film. I don't necessarily lot, yeah. blame the white man. I literally, in, at war with the principalities, actually, whether it's psychological, whether it's spiritual, that enabled the system yeah. that created the white man. Yeah. And I'm a part of that system. You know, mm. and um, and so this is this character with the butcher. It plays around a lot with that. Yeah, that we sort of part of it. And there's a guy with like a patches. Yeah, you know, he's like yeah. white. Yeah, but patches, white patches and stuff like that. And in front of his eyes. And this is the way I was play. I was talking about the system in general, but also it could be it could be interpreted also differently as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's really open in that sense. Yeah. Um, I think it's very crucial to emphasize and it was um, very important that yeah this um, queer life uh, mm. got visibility in this film yeah and we see this happening lately um, in uh, in cinemas of, of African countries mm. with Rafiki which was an immense success for instance mm. um, how do you see queer cinema in, in Africa and in particular in, in your country? You know, it's still in a, in a, in a very ambient stage, and, but it, which is not necessarily the bad thing. It's, it's yeah, a beautiful thing right. that we are getting there. And I was talking about, with, to a friend today about the perception. Uh -huh. It's always about the perception that the more people get used to two men kissing, yeah. it, it, they get used to it in a way. They get yeah. to see it not as look, but more, and I feel like we are there as a country that now it could still be seen, but like, ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. But it, I think gradually it gets there because people now get to really do what they feel. They yeah. do what they feel and wear what they want to wear. And I feel like in this case, it's really, it's re we're in a good place right now yeah. as far as the, the diversity and as far as the, uh, the, the, like the queer cinema in general. Like, it's, there is a doors that are opening and that people cannot necessarily just say, we're going to see the gay film. Yeah. It's almost like the part of the, it becomes a part of the narrative and the part of the culture. Exactly. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And I think that's that's very important. Um, let's talk a bit about um, about this imaginative space that the that the film opens up because, or at least in my interpretation, there was a sense of grief in this film by looking at looking back um, at this mother. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I also felt like that a possibility of rebirth um, mm -hmm. was present there. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's more of a... <clears throat> there's also a code in the beginning of the film. It says that I, I, I shall build you a new pair of eyes and a new face mm -hmm. and everything will look beautiful from here. And, and for me, I just feel like we are in a process of becoming. Mm. I feel like even as a, as a nation, or uh, when I look at continent as a whole, we are in a process of becoming. Yeah. And um, maybe I'm a little bit too optimistic about it, but at least this is what I feel, literally feel. Right. I feel we are becoming something that is going to be beautiful. I mean, in every, like I, I, was, I was sort of inspired as well when I was in Tunisia. There was this suicidal bomber and, um, yeah. and everybody was so scared. I, mean, I was terrified. And everybody was calling everywhere because they were terrified. And the, when the, we thought the, 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 the festival is going to end oh, because yeah. of this threat. Yeah. yeah. And the next day, the next morning, they said, no, the, 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 the festival is continuing. Which festival was this? Uh, Katash. Katash. Okay. Katash yeah. Film Festival and, uh, in Tunisia. And, uh, and when I went there, I realized it's normal. It's just back to normal, mm. you know? And, and somehow there was this bravado that resonated with me, this yeah. connectivity, people coming together, despite the terror, people coming together. And I always feel in a way that how the rhythm of life is like that, that the, 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 the more that the, it becomes very dark, it, it's the more this another personality is forged, mm. or another po power is sort of forged within yeah. your, yourselves. Yeah. And I feel like we are becoming something. And that's why I, it's sort of in my a lingering in my film of the process of becoming. It's almost like a travailing or like a, or bath pains, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's weird to make an example about bath pains because I never gave bath, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's almost like you're becoming something better, but we sort yeah. of have to endure 
yeah. this moment now, just enjoy this darkness now. Yeah, you it's, know? it's part yeah. of a journey. It's a part of the journey. Yeah, right. Yeah. So the title of the film, it says, this is my last film about you, mm -hmm. referring to this mother. Is this? Yes, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully because, uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, even my last short film was really about, uh, about my country. Yeah. And I wanted to transcend the idea as much as I tried to make them as universal as possible yeah. that anybody could relate with yeah. my films, but it's always seen, still seen as uh, I'm an African filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I'm still seen. I'm yeah. still pigeonholed. I'm yeah. still in the box yeah. of that. And as much as I know about this, but I would like to transcend a little bit and go a little mm -hmm. further as yeah. far as not necessarily looking at my country, critiquing it, or, or making films that is literally based on, uh, about um, uh, the characters from my country. Yeah. but that I can just cross the river and do something else. Yeah. Because I just feel like, even in my previous film, I talk about like, it, it, it's about a woman who is a stick fighter. In my country, there's no stick fighter, or yeah. women who are stick fighters. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to, re, to write a different, um, sort of different narrative yeah. of a woman who is a stiff, stick fighter. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and because it has to do with my country, what I, I would like to see my country, it's my deals. I, I always paint my deals that I like to see my country pretty much. You know, and, and in this case, I just feel like I'm a bit exhausted a little bit. I just need to maybe, you know, move somewhere else, but mm. still doing what I feel and comes naturally yeah. as a filmmaker. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here with thank us. Um, I think it was a very touching movie for sure. Thank and you. Um, yeah, I really hope that um, we will see you soon again, maybe yes. in another movie. Yes, definitely. Um, enjoy the festival. Thank All you very best, much. And thank, thank you very you. much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye.